Take me under once again. 
Hello, everybody. Welcome and good morning. It's good to be gathered with you all. Just a real quick brief announcement right as we're getting going this morning that we will be um, loosening our mask mandates. I noticed that many of you are not wearing masks, so good. Um, if, you, if you feel more comfortable wearing a mask, we encourage you to do so, but it will not be required at this point going forward. So, thank you very much. And now we will continue, and I invite you to stand as you are able for our call to worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come to God who gathers us in. We come, we come to, God to God who nurtures, nurtures us like, like a father. father. Come to God whose arms are open and waiting. We, we come, come to God, God who welcomes and forgives us. us. Come to God who journeys with us. We, we come, come to, to God, God who sees us as we really are and, and loves us anyway. anyway. Come, praise our loving, nurturing God. I invite you to be seated. Our first reading is from Psalm 107, beginning with the first verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe, gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went down to the sea in ships, plying their trade in deep waters. 
they beheld the works of the Lord, God's wonderful works in the deep. Then God spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which tossed high the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and descended to the depths. Their souls melted away in their peril. They staggered and reeled like drunkards, and all their skill was of no avail. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. You stilled the storm to a whisper and silenced the waves of the sea. Then were they glad when it grew calm, when you guided them to their harbor they desired. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them exalt you in the assembly of the people, in the council of the elders. Let them sing Alleluia. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the second book of Corinthians, beginning with the the sixth chapter, beginning with the first verse. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, 
by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors, yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and not yet killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the gospel. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith with wisdom. Today's Gospel reading is from the book of Mark, beginning in the fourth chapter. When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were also with him. 
A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. And grace, peace, and faith be unto you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thinking about this passage this week, I've kind of seen Jesus as somewhat of a paradoxical figure. He's kind of like an ordinary guy uh, in the sense that he just wants to take a nap. He's been working really hard nonstop, and maybe he's a little bit of an introvert, and he's constantly surrounded by all these people, and he just wants to take a nap real quick at the back of the boat. Please, can I take this nap? Maybe like any ordinary human being might like to do. But at the same time, he is the commander of the seas and the wind, the prepotent one. He tells the winds to cease and be quiet. He's the one who inspires awe and fear in the disciples, especially those whose ringtones are going off in the middle of worship. (laughs) Be afraid. Be very afraid. He casts out the demons and cures diseases all around. We have this paradoxical character of Jesus. There's a professor, David Jacobson, from Boston University School of Theology. He kind of talks about this idea of Jesus being kind of ordinary in a sense. He talks about how when he gets into the boat that day, it specifically says he got in just as he was. He didn't have a big entourage or people that were carrying his luggage for him so that he could get on this boat and take this journey. He didn't need weeks of preparation to figure out what he was going to do. He just went and got in the boat just as he was an ordinary guy. And of course, he talks about who doesn't like to take a nap once in a while or need to take a nap after we've been working so hard. It's kind of an ordinary thing that we all might need to do once in a while. Contrast that picture of Jesus to what is happening around him. We have this apocalyptic boat ride. And leading up to this boat ride, Jesus has been casting out demons. He's been preaching and teaching about repentance He's been talking about the kingdom of God, which we learned last week was like a mustard seed, right? He's been fighting against the forces of evil and demonic oppression and sickness and death. He's been teaching the people what the kingdom of God is really like. And it's not the same thing as their secular institutions, even their religious ones or their governments. It's something that is outside of the norms of society, of the norms of the day. It goes beyond those norms to find a way to love others unconditionally and to find a way to bring true healing and liberation to people's lives through an eternal perspective on God and principally on God's love, grace, and justice for all people. But right here, we're just in chapter 4 of Mark. Things are just starting to pick up. Things are getting good. It's just the beginning. And the disciples and Jesus are going against this apparent tide of evil that is coming up against them. So they get on the boat, and the storm starts to pick up. The waves are tossing them to and fro. The seas are rough, almost like a chaotic storm that is happening. Uh, chaotic image of life and death 
that is so much a part of our existence. But the power of Jesus goes beyond that, even to calm the storms and the sea. Here Jesus is just beyond extraordinary. He's something that I don't even think we can really live up to in the way that he acts because we're just really, really ordinary people. I mean, can I even calm the storm that is inside of my own soul, let alone be able to calm the storms that are out there in the world around me? This story highlights perhaps our own lack of faith and perhaps our own lack of understanding of what faith in God maybe entails for us and for the world. There's a really good example of an understanding of who God is and what faith in God entails. It's found in the story of Job in the Old Testament. Do you guys remember the story of Job? What happens in the story? How does it begin? Who is Job? Righteous man, I heard. Servant of God. He's also very wealthy, right? He has a lot, a lot of money. He has a huge family. He has like 10 kids or something. He's very fortunate in life. He has all these blessings. But then what happens to him? He gets it all taken away. He loses everything that he had. And not only that, he gets it worse off than he had before because now he gets uh, attacked with boils and all these sores all over his body. He's constantly feeling oppressed and sick all the time. He's just having a really bad go of it. And all of it is testing his faith in God. And he struggles mightily in this test He goes through a period of deep grief and depression. And then he gets three friends that come and visit him. But they aren't the greatest friends to have in that point in his life. They are really a very little help for him because they give him some terrible advice. They basically blame him for everything that has gone wrong with him. They say, you must have done something terrible. You must be a terrible sinner. Even if we don't know what it is you did, you must have done something to deserve all of this punishment. So they blamed him for the disasters that had befallen him. At his lowest point, he ends up accusing God for what had happened to him. He actually describes it in that he wants to take Yahweh to court. He wants to take it to a court. If only he could find a judge that could actually arbitrate between those two parties, he would take Yahweh to court and he would state his case about why he did not deserve what had happened to him and why it should be changed around. And at that point is when God comes and confronts Job in the whirlwind. Do you remember that? Remember that? God is out of the whirlwind speaking to Job. And basically he just puts Job in his place. He says, what do you really know, mortal man, about the creation of the universe? You don't even understand how you got to be here in the first place. But you are going to now accuse God for how the universe is created and how it came to be formed. Were you there when it happened? Were you there when the stars and the planets were placed in the sky? When the earth was formed out of watery chaos? When the land was separated from the seas? Were you there, Job? God says he created the mountains, the trees, the animals, the stars in the heavens. He even says that he created the beasts and those scary creatures of land and sea. And he especially focuses on one monster in particular that was called the Leviathan. It was feared by the people of that day who lived in that part of the world as a great sea monster that would attack boats, that would uh, kill people. It was just seen as a chaotic monster in that part of the world. Dr. Brennan Reed from Columbia Theological Seminary writes this. The gods were often understood to have engaged in mortal combat with such monsters to defend the cosmos. But here, God births the source of chaos and nurtures it. Chaos exists as a part of God's ordered cosmos, even a treasured part of it. 
Yet God has prescribed limits for it, making a sort of playpen for the powerful infant to exercise its chaotic powers without endangering the stability of the world. When we stop and think about it, chaos is actually necessary for life itself. It is a part of the process or cycle of life that we go through. We cannot have life without death. We cannot have growth without decay. We cannot have success without failure. And there cannot be new generations to carry on after us if we ourselves do not pass away. Dr. Reed continues, and this is a mystery. It is not explained or defended. God merely asserts it. The world full of beauty and creativity and danger seems not to have been constructed merely for human consumption. The story is bigger than us, and none of us are the main characters. God does not so much answer Job's questions as reframe them and offer Job a new way to see the world in which his grief and his experiences are not the end or the entirety of the story. So we see that some parts of the universe have chaos, and it's a part of it, and it's necessary, and that means that we humans are going to be chaotic in many ways as well. We seem to need a certain amount of chaos in our lives to actually stay healthy and sane. We need a little bit of that spirit of adventure in our lives so that things don't become too stagnant or stale. I think that's a part of why I have loved so much um, a part of what I've loved so much about my work being able to visit churches in different parts of the world from the Holy Land to Haiti to Mexico um, because I get to visit new people, make new relationships, have these experiences that are full of adventure in many ways that has been beneficial to me in that sense. And maybe just what we love about travel in general as human beings um, I just got to take a vacation, for instance. We went down to Tijuana, we went down to Ensenada, and it was wonderful. I had never been there before. It's always wonderful to go to a new city, to get to know it. There's that spirit of adventure that is so important to our lives. And any number of activities that bring excitement and novelty to our days are important. It doesn't have to be super dramatic or anything like that. But wherever there is excitement in our lives that brings us meaning and purpose, we are called to live into that, even if there is a little bit of scariness to it, a little bit of chaos in the adventure. I see this embodied so much in the New Testament in the story of Paul the Apostle. Paul and his group are really seen as pretty ordinary people when we stop and think about it, but they are people who suffered so much hardship in their journey to spread the kingdom of God to the Gentiles. They have been through so much in their lives, yet somehow they were able to achieve so much. Somehow they were able to find joy and love in God's grace in spite of their suffering and the difficulties that they faced. Somehow they are able to be rejoicing in the midst of these troubles and able to bear fruit when many would have thought they would have been barren. They go beyond the parameters or the limitations that society had placed upon them, which is a paradox for us to consider as well today. It reminds me of the life of Harriet, Tru uh, Harriet Truman, no, uh, no, Harriet Tubman, thank you for correcting me out there. Harriet Tubman, I got the opportunity, I have been wanting to see this movie for a long time, the movie Harriet, has anybody seen this? Few people out there, highly recommend it. I myself don't watch a lot of um, dramatic movies. I kind of get a lot of that from the news already. So often when I'm watching TV or movies, I stick with things that are just funny and uh, escape and make me laugh. But once in a while, it's good to watch a dramatic movie, even get a few tears flowing down those eyes. It was a very powerful movie to watch. 
And she's portrayed in this movie as a figure like Moses, a prophet of God who has come to free God's people from bondage of slavery and lead them into freedom. She saves so many people along her journey um, through extraordinary circumstances and all kinds of things. And yet she was a woman standing about five feet tall. She was not especially um, powerful looking or anything like that, but she had power in her bones, and she had charisma, and she had God's spirit that empowered her to go forward and led others to her as well. That power that she had from God made her rival the most powerful men who were alive that day. It was even said that she led a regiment of black soldiers in the Civil War and that they were able to free hundreds of slaves in one go, in one expedition that they had. The only woman to have led such a regiment, if I remember correctly. But in so many ways, she was an ordinary person. It was really her connection to God that was what made her extraordinary. She prayed constantly for guidance, and she seemed to have this special relationship with God that empowered her to do amazing, sacrificial things for others that I would only wish to be able to live up to. She went through so much adversity in her life, but she persevered. It is truly amazing what God can do with ordinary people in this world. Sometimes we might have questions like Job. We might be feeling doubts in our hearts when we go through difficult times or we see the injustice that is around us in the world. Sometimes we might experience that injustice like Paul did, but continue on and press forward and find joy in service to the gospel. And perhaps we might even be able to to achieve so much more like Harriet Tubman was able to do. And we can recognize that each person in this world has been given the opportunity to have this connection with God, to have this deep, profound relationship with God, and each one of us is capable of so much. Each one of us can bear so much fruit, so much love and grace and peace for others around us. No matter what we have been through or how we may have been oppressed, God can use us in powerful ways. God can use ordinary people just like us. And if things get really tough, if things get so bad and we feel like, you know what, I just can't go on anymore right now like this, Jesus encourages us this day that a little nap might be just what we need. Sometimes we can take that nap and wake up and everything is looking a little bit better and we can push forward calming those storms that are in our lives and maybe even the storms that are in the world around us. May God bless us this day to go out and move forward in God's liberating activity for the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Who breaks the power of sin and I invite you to stand as you are able. Is mighty and so much stronger. Shakes the holy with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder. The King of glory, the King of all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfair.
Let us now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Let us pray. Holy God, above us, among us, within us, we rejoice this day that while you might have chosen to be unknown to us, you have revealed yourself in many ways. Each encounter with you calls us to return blessings with worship, compassion, and service. 
So when we give this day, we do so in gratitude for all your paternal care for us through your creation. When we give this day, we give because in love you gave us Christ, that through him we might find eternal life. When we give this day, your spirit leads your church to reach out in compassion, mercy, and grace to all your children everywhere. In gratitude, we celebrate you, three and yet one. Amen. I invite you to remain seated or kneel as you are able for the intercessory prayers. Lord God of hosts, you are always asking, whom shall I send? Give each of us the courage of Isaiah to respond, here am I, send me. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, the whole earth is full of your glory. For fathers everywhere who have given us life and love, that we may show them respect and love. For fathers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them. Holy God, hear this prayer for our fathers. For men, though without children of their own, acted like a father and have nurtured and cared for us. For stepfathers who have assumed that role with love and joy and who have loved the children of another as their own and created a new family. For adoptive fathers who have claimed the orphan as a precious gift from God. Holy God, hear this prayer for our fathers. For fathers who have been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to the needs of their children and have not sustained their families. For fathers who struggle with temptation, violence, or addiction. For those who do harm and for those whom they have harmed. Holy God, hear this prayer for our fathers. For new fathers full of hope, for long-time fathers full of wisdom, for fathers yet to be and fathers soon to be, for those who have shaped our lives without claim of family or kinship, for those who have taught us, guided us, shaped us, and molded us into servants of Christ our Lord. Hear this prayer, prayer for, for our, our fathers. fathers. For all people, the dying, the sick, the lonely and the forsaken. For all the precious children of God, we once again remember them in our hearts or aloud. For Janine, Bob, Russ, Marilyn, Yvonne, and Marge. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, the whole Holy earth is full of your, your glory. glory. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks on this day for the constant movement towards freedom and liberation of your Holy Spirit. We give you thanks for the founding of this country, for the freeing of slaves, for the civil rights movement. We ask now that you would help to unite us so that we can come together today to continue in that holy work of liberation for all God's people in whatever way you would have us work in that regard. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, the whole Lord earth is full of your glory. Come Holy Spirit, come with your life-giving care and joy. Amen. Amen. And now, may the peace of our risen Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you all. And also with you. That was kind of weak. I think I, we're, get, we're getting back into it, but I got to hear you again. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. All right, now we're getting there. Now let's share a sign of that peace with one another. The second peace, the excited one, and not the first one. <laughs>
right, we still got to continue with our worship, people. <laughs> That's enough peace for one day here. We'll share more peace after the worship is over. <laughs> Now let us continue. We will continue with communion. There were only a limited amount of the individual servings for communion. How many of you got those when you came in? Are there still more back there? If you haven't got one, you can get one of those. If we have run out completely, we do have this up front here. We use this for the 8 a.m. service. Um, because we had so many, so much fewer people there. But whoever is left over that does not get their individual one, I will invite you to come forward and receive it in the traditional manner of intinction when we get to that point after the Lord's Prayer. All right. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now I invite you with your individual servants to take the wafer and hear these words proclaimed for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. And now you can take your grape juice or wine. Hear these words for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. And now I will invite those who did not have an individual, did anybody not have an individual serving? I'll invite you to come forward down to the front here. These are the special ones out of that group here. <laughs> special people. <laughs> Maybe they were special. We'll, call it, we'll keep special. Body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you in God's grace and strengthen you into life everlasting. Amen. Okay, we have some announcements for you this morning. A number of announcements. First of all, we have our group that focuses on diversity and inclusion, our round table group. We meet once a month. This month we're meeting next Sunday because normally it would be this Sunday, but Father's Day. And we're going back to meeting in person. So if you'd like to join us next Sunday from 2 to 4 p.m., we're going to be talking about the institutions that make up the United States. We'll talk a little bit about the history of those institutions, how they have been used in bad ways, but we'll also talk about how things have moved forward and where there is still more work to be done in our country to uh, fight against injustices here and, and around the world, really. Um, so please come and join us for that if that is at all interesting to you and you want to learn more. And it's really a conversation. So it's not like somebody's going to be preaching at us. This is what you need to think. It's more of a dialogue where we can talk to one another and share our insights together on these issues that are facing our country today. That same Sunday, we're going to be having a hymn sing. It's going to be outdoors. I encourage you to send in all your favorite hymns that you would like to sing. Uh, we're going to be gathering at 530 for refreshments, snacks. And then at 630, we're going to start singing. So it'll be a good opportunity to get back into the mood of things. I'm still, I still don't hear much singing going on out there. I think everybody's a little timid and everything. So maybe this will help us get back into that mood. And so do, don't forget that's 5.30 gathering and 6.30 we'll be singing next Sunday. VBS is coming up, everybody. VBS, there is a sign-up sheet as you're leaving in the narthex. Please see how you can be involved. Any way to, to help out would be greatly appreciated. And this year, we're also going to be having a music camp. It will be the week following VBS, the same hours to keep it simple, 10 to 1 p.m. each day. And it's going to be led by Chris and Greg, who are going to do, be doing workshops for the kids. And then Dom Maurice is going to be helping out as well, especially with the littlest ones, doing dance and art and other little musical things as well. So we could use more volunteers for that also. So please um, talk to me or Dom Maurice or the office if you're interested to help out with that. The rose that is on the altar today is to celebrate the birth of Cal L, who is the daughter of Ali Bach and Naranja Maganti, who is the grand and the grandson of Diana Bach in the back there. Congratulations. <laughs> Looks like a beautiful child. I saw some pictures online. So congratulations to you and many blessings to your family. And we have a special announcement from Kathleen Preston. Save the date, August 1st, we're going to have our first ever cornhole tournament slash youth fundraiser. Cornhole is a fancy beanbag toss game um, that becomes very competitive if you let it. So it's going to be our first time that we've done this. Um, it'll be an adventure, but it'll be able to get us back together um, in person, but outdoors. Um, so again, that'll be on August 1st after church. Uh, there will be a $25 per person entry fee, but that will also provide uh, barbecue lunch. Um, and we'll ask you to bring your own beverages and a cooler to tote around with you as you go from cornhole board to cornhole board. Um, and there will be more information to follow in the upcoming weeks, but I just wanted you to be able to get that on your calendar. So August 1st, Cornhole Tournament Youth Fundraiser. Thank you. All right. That sounds like fun. I've had mixed success so far on the Cornhole. One day really good, one day terrible. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, also, I got to give a shout out to all the fathers who are out there. Can we give a round of applause to all these guys? I'm a father as well, can't believe it. Um, how did that happen, who knows? But uh, we don't always give shout outs to the fathers out there. We don't do a whole lot for them, but we love you, we support you, and we care for you also. May God bless you so much, all the fathers, grandfathers, stepfathers, great-grandfathers. God bless you all in this coming year.
Okay, we have one last thing for you. We are celebrating today all of our high school and college graduates who are from our congregation. We got one right here. You want to come forward? We got one over here. Yeah, you got to come on down. Don't, don't be shy. Don't be shy. All right, and then we have others that sent in their information. So, uh, so we'll give a shout out to everybody. Just go ahead and stand right up here if you would. I just want to give a shout out to Hannah Sandoval. She graduated from La Mirada High School and is planning to attend El Cerritos College. Uh, Haley Farias got a... Sorry, my bad. <laughs> I'm going to say it in Spanish. Farias. <laughs> Farias, no. Uh, Haley Farias, who graduated with a BA in Business Administration from Chapman University. Colin Farias, who is right here, graduated from Sunny Hills High School and is going to be going to Fullerton City College coming up. Lily Jane Montgomery from Orange Lutheran, graduated from Orange Lutheran High School and is headed off to the University of Alabama. Jenna Bining also graduated from Sunny Hills High School and is going to UC Irvine. Ariana Strom graduated from Cal State University San Marcos. And Amanda Hansen from Colorado School of Mines. M.A. says, I don't think we have met before. So. <laughs> I'm, I was like, I'm just going to go down the list until <laughs> we get. Congratulations to you and, and for graduating from the Colorado School of Mines with an uh, M.A. in statistics. So congratulations to you all. Um, and, I, and if we didn't get any more information, I'm sorry, those were all the names that we received leading up to this. But we want to say a special blessing to you and to reach out to all of those who have graduated this year. So if you would like, you can reach out your hand as we say this blessing. And if it's on the screen, I say that we all say it together as a group so we can all do the blessing together, all right? So receive this blessing to go into the world. May you have the commitment to go into the world being led by the great spirit of hope and imagination to see the gifts and achievements that the almighty creator calls out of you. May you have the courage to live your impossible dreams so that they will become possible. May you also have the courage not to look back because you are confident that the source of all creation will use you in a mighty way for the purpose to which you are called. As you go forth, put into practice the accumulated knowledge you have achieved. Go forth with your feet firmly planted on solid ground, plowed by your family, friends and teachers of your heritage and society. Go to heights quite beyond your present capabilities as you follow the lead of God, who gives faith, wisdom, understanding, and blessings. Go, knowing that what you have received today is yours, and nothing can separate you from the great source of knowledge and wisdom, the Master Teacher. Go in peace. Amen. Let's give a round of applause for our graduates. Congratulations. Congratulations. And I now invite you to stand as you are able and let us sing together on our way out to the world. i 
Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.